Hi guys, what is up? Welcome back to another video. Today, you join me in the Genesis GV80, a large luxury SUV from the Kia Hyundai Motor Group. Now, Genesis is to them what Lexus is to Toyota, a premium brand aimed at bringing the cars up market and adding a touch of luxury. So, in the UK, Genesis is relatively new and that's why I'm excited to show you this car today because around £70,000, this kind of falls into the same category as some of the biggest and best German rivals and I'm here to tell you why this is a great alternative. Let's talk a little bit about the Genesis experience. Now, Genesis obviously is very exclusive in the UK at the moment. There's not many of these here. Just to give you an idea, I went on Autotrader and eBay just to see if I could find one of these and there are currently zero for sale. Yep, none. So you have to really go through Genesis to get a hold of a pre-owned one or if you want a new one, of course. Now, if you're looking to get a pre-owned vehicle, you should always check out the car's history. And that's where one of my affiliates, Car Vertical, comes in handy. Car Vertical is a car history check. And what it does is it makes sure that you're not buying a car that's been stolen, written off, or clocked. It gives you a comprehensive history of the car's MOTs and also if it's been involved in any accidents. It's unlikely that you're gonna be buying one of these pre-owned, but if you do, make sure that you use my link in the description below to make sure that you get a little bit of money off the Car Vertical check and make sure that you're getting a good car. And if you're looking to get one of these new, then make sure that you click on my Lease Loco link in the description below to check out all the latest lease deals. So let's talk now about the Genesis buying experience. If you buy a Genesis in the UK, there's no main dealerships, you've just got the Genesis Studio, but you can deal with everything online and via telephone with your Genesis personal assistant. Now they'll walk you through the process start to finish, but not only that, but they will deliver a car to your house for a test drive, they will deliver your car to you when it arrives, and they will take your car away for servicing. They'll come and pick it up from your house. Not many manufacturers do stuff like that. Not only that, but when you purchase the car, five years of service, warranty, and roadside assistance is included in the price. Not only that, but with Genesis, you're getting something that you're not getting with other brands at the moment in the UK, and that's exclusivity. Of course, everyone's going to compare this car to the Bentley Bentayga based on looks. That is totally fair enough. But what I'm talking about is in this price segment, you're getting exclusivity. The main rivals for this car, you've got the Volvo XC90, the BMW X5, the Mercedes GLE, and a few others in that price bracket as well. And if you go out and buy a Volvo XC90 or a BMW X5, you're going to see one down the road. As I say, I've not seen another one of these. I've not seen a single one on the road the whole week I've been driving it, and I've done 400 miles. I've also had plenty of people tell me that they've never even seen one before, or never even heard of the brand. So you are really joining an exclusive club here, and it's one with all of those benefits. Home delivery and drop off, collection for servicing, servicing included in the price. What could go wrong with that? Let's talk about looks then. People think this is a Bentley. That's just how it is. I've seen lots of reviewers say it, but I've seen lots of people come up to me over the last week or so saying, is that a Bentley? No, it's not a Bentley. It certainly looks like one, but that's no bad thing. I do actually think from the front end, it looks a little bit better than the Bentayga. It's a bit less vulgar. It's got that large crest front grille, even bigger than the one on the Bentley. And I think it really makes a statement. It glistens in the sun, that chrome. It just looks gorgeous against this Cardiff green metallic paint. And the Matrix LED headlights are gorgeous as well. They fade in and out. They've got a really nice pattern to them. And the two lines that you see front and rear on the LED lights, that's the signature for Genesis. And you're gonna see that across all of their models. It's a really nice touch. I do think it's a stunning thing. It has so much road presence. It's really large. The 22 inch wheels on this particular model set it off really nicely. And they're just the right color as well. They're kind of a, a sort of a gunmetal gray type color against this green metallic paint. It looks just right. From the side, it looks a bit like the Bentley as well. They say it's designed to look fast even when it's going slow, and I can see that. From the back, I'm not quite as keen on the, on the back as I am the front, but I still do think it does look quite nice and imposing, very broad shouldered. It's definitely one of those cars that has to be appreciated in person. I saw this in pictures way before I had this delivered, but when it actually turned up at my house, I thought, wow, that really does look the business. And when you park it up next to some other cars of a similar size, you see that as well. And people are gonna say it's just a knockoff Bentley, but look, at around 70 grand, that's a totally different price bracket to what the Bentley is, right? And yeah, it's not quite as special in here, but it's still nice in here, it's plush, and you get all the gadgets and gizmos that you're gonna need. So let's talk about this car then. It's a large luxury SUV that can be configured with either seven or five seats. This one in particular has five, it's kind of a mid-range model, but you can get seven seats at an additional cost, so it's about 500 pounds to add the third row of seats, or you can get it with the high-end model as well. 
prices start from around £58,000. And to be fair, that entry level model gets you lots and lots of kit as standard. I would, however, at least recommend going up to this mid level trim, which is the luxury model, which is about £64,000, because that gets you these gorgeous 22 inch wheels, the real wood inside, a leatherette dash, and all the gadgets and gizmos that you're going to need. There are also some options to give you more driving assistance stuff, and it is very good to be fair. As I said, all the electronics are Kia Hyundai, so I've got the usual niceties like the lane keep assist, I've got the steering assist that you can press with just a touch of a button on the steering wheel, I've got this gorgeous 14 and a half inch screen which is an ultra wide screen which fits loads and loads of information on, it's both touch screen and also can be controlled with a jog wheel and a touch pad down the bottom with handwriting recognition, very similar to sort of the BMW iDrive system, I would say it's not quite as good as iDrive but it's so close and it has so many features that are really useful and as I say about every Kia Hyundai product that I get in, this absolutely works all the time, flawlessly. Never crashes, never goes wrong, never stutters, no lag, no animation jolts, it is just perfect. You also get a 12.3 inch screen in front of me, which is a digital driver's display, and it has this wonderful 3D depth of field effect, which you can't capture on camera, but in person is really great because it makes it look almost like traditional dials with the real 3D needles. Also, you get the information that's important kind of pop out to you. It almost looks as though it's uh, kind of raised off of the screen, which is a really, really nice effect. The absolute top of the range model is the Luxury Plus, which starts at £73,000, and that includes a suede headliner, soft closed doors, diamond quilting on the leather, the third row seats, and the second row luxury pack, so it contains all of the controls, similar to what you've got up here. It just adds a little bit extra to the car, makes it a little bit more premium. And of course, if budget allows, I would always go for that model because the soft closed doors are one thing that I wish this one had. And also the material of the headliner in here is very basic. It's very much like a normal car, which I think is a little bit disappointing in this price range. This particular one I'm driving here is a three liter turbo diesel, six cylinder engine, which is lovely and smooth. Does not to 60 in about 6.9 seconds, 272 horsepower and around 434 foot pounds of torque, which is enough grunt to get this thing off the line very quickly with the four wheel drive system. It definitely has enough torque to pick up when you're driving along, you need to perform an overtake. The only time it really struggles is really at the high end speeds. Unfortunately, they have trimmed down the line a little bit here in the UK. The only one you can currently buy new is a two and a half litre turbo four cylinder petrol. It has more power at 300 horsepower, but it has less torque, around 311 foot pounds. And I'm not sure that that would feel quite right in this car. And I'm sure the economy would suffer for that as well. In this one, the three litre turbo diesel, I've been averaging about 27 mile per gallon, which of course isn't wonderful, but it is a big heavy car and it has provided a nice load of torque and it's 80 litre fuel tank is massive so that will get you plenty of range. Get about 500 miles out of a tank in this but that will cost you about 160 quid in today's diesel. Performance of the petrol, although not as torquey, should be similar in terms of your 0 to 60 time. So I don't think it will take a hit in terms of speed, but I think if you're looking used, this might be the model to go for. So what's it actually like to drive then? Well, it is soft. It's a luxury SUV, as they say. It's definitely got that capability. There is a sport mode, which does firm it up a little bit, but you're not gonna be tackling any B roads too dramatically in this. It is huge as well. It's definitely kind of, uh, in the large SUV segment. It doesn't really fit into many normal spaces, but that's not a problem at all because this has the same amazing 360 camera technology that you find in the Kias and the Hyundais, which I've found to be an absolute pleasure to use more so than in most other cars I've driven. You get a full top-down view, which stitches everything together really nicely. You can work your way around the car in 3D if you want to, and you've got those cameras that show the wheels so that you don't curb them. Not only that, but you've also got the blind spot monitoring, which not only flashes up in your mirrors and also gives you haptic feedback through the steering wheel and an audible tone if it thinks you're gonna hit something, but also it has the cameras that change on the dash when you indicate. So your, if your speedo or your tack will change to a blind spot camera when you indicate to change lanes, which again, lovely touch, great safety. This is also an incredibly safe car. The collision assistance in this is brilliant as well. You've got the radar, it will audibly warn you and it will shake the steering wheel if it thinks you're gonna hit something and there is steering assist as well. But not only that, it will tighten your seat belt to push you into the seat to brace you for impact which I think, again, is a really nice safety feature. Up front, it's nice and plush. I've got these seats that have absolutely infinite adjustment. You've got four-way lumbar, and you've also got a massage function. Um, it also has a mode where it will move you around on long drives to make sure you don't get cramps. 
and when you touch the controls down here it pops up on the screen to show you exactly what control you're touching before you press it and what it will actually do so that's just based on capacitive sensors on the buttons so before you even use it it shows you what you're going to be controlling you can get a great driving position they recline really far you've got heated and ventilated seats you've got four zone climate control you've got a heated steering wheel everything you would need when you put it in sport mode it will actually lower the seat and move the bolsters in to hug you a little bit tighter which is a really nice touch and my only complaint really is the headrest isn't very adjustable and it kind of sits quite far forward a bit like in volvos and stuff like that so i feel like i can't quite get my head in the right position unless i recline the seat back a little bit but that's a very minor complaint all of the touch points are lovely so in this one you've got the leatherette dash you've got nice plush materials down the bottom and everything you touch is this nice knurled aluminium so it's got this really nice heavy feel to it and it's cold to the touch so it feels really premium and down here for the gear selector you've got this nice glass rotary wheel so it's just a bit more upmarket than in the rival vehicles the real wood in here is lovely too and i really like the sweeping design of the dash with the one air vent that goes all the way across it looks really nice cubby space is a little bit limited though i can't really fit a large bottle in the door bins there's only two cup holders up front here and also the glove box is relatively small but it more than makes up for it with the cavernous boot there's plenty of space back there plus you can fold both rows of seats down to give you even more space and that is done on the button although unfortunately the button does not electrically raise the seats but there's no load lip so it's nice and easy to get things in and out and also you can of course have a sit on the back if you need to the load cover even tucks nicely underneath the floor of the boot so you can get that out of the way if you need more load space and the back is a spacious affair as well you've got pretty okay headroom it definitely could be a little bit better just because of the sweeping roof line but it's more than adequate for me at six foot and you've got a little bit of recline in the seats as well there's some manual adjustability and also you can slide them forward and backwards depending on whether you're using the third row of seats or not you've got some cup holders back there you've got a proper high wattage outlet all of the outlets in here the 12 12 volt car outlets do 180 watts so they support fast charging of all of your devices and you've got the climate controls and heated seats back there as well Isofix points are present, but they are those ones that kind of you have to squidge between the leather. There's no kind of uh, flaps or covers on there. So it might end up kind of damaging that leather or wearing it a little bit over time, but it does mean that they're nicely hidden. Infotainment, as I say, is absolutely spectacular. You've got augmented reality navigation. You've got this really nice splash screen that shows you the weather and the time with this gorgeous font, and it shows you a bit of a map as well. You've got Apple CarPlay, Android Auto support with wireless charging. There's plenty to play with. You've even got the nice sort of Kia Hyundai gimmicks, like you've got the option to talk to the backseat passengers using the inbuilt microphones. There's also a quiet mode so that if the kids are asleep in the back, you can enable that and it will disable all of the speakers in the car apart from the ones in the front, which is a really, really nice touch and it limits the volume as well. Talking of speakers, you've got in here the Lexicon 18 speaker system, which really does crank. You've got a few options for some different EQ settings and I managed to get it just how I like it. It's not quite as good, I'd say, as some of the higher end Harman Kardon and Burmester sound systems that I've heard in other cars, but it is certainly good enough and you can get hold of it. A friend of mine ordered an X3 recently from BMW and was told, sorry, you can't have Harman Kardon sound in that because of the chip shortage. Oh dear. That little audible chime there tells you that there was a speed camera coming up and it's unobtrusive. On the heads up display, it does flash at you if you're going over the speed limit for about 30 seconds or so, um, but after that, it will leave you alone. And in terms of the head up display, it tells you just the crucial information that you need and nothing more. The driver's display in front of me is amazing. I actually really, really have fallen in love with the 3D effect that's on here. It won't really come across on camera, but things like the needles on the dials and the information in the center, such as the current speed, um, your you know miles per gallon, all of that stuff, all of the important bits are raised out towards you and the dials are assessed. So it creates this really nice effect. You can switch it off if you like, but I think it's really nice. And I think the design's really classy as well. You've got this kind of uh, copper effect on here. And you've also got different views for your sport mode and your eco modes. And of course, being four wheel drive, you've got some terrain modes in this as well, such as mud, sand, snow, which will get you out of a sticky situation. I also really like the combination of touch and physical buttons for the climate controls. There's no faffing about with touch sliders for temperature or anything like that. You've got these nice physical rotary dials. And then when it comes to uh, your heated seats and stuff like that, they're on the touch screen there. 
but you've got some nice physical buttons for the shortcuts and that's what I love to see just a perfect combination and the steering wheel whilst I'm not too keen on this kind of two spoke design I do actually think that it is very functional again it's got the controls stolen mainly from Kia um, although much nicer in this you've got kind of these nice chunky metal paddles and you've got the knurled aluminium uh, rotary dials on here for volume and that kind of thing but everything's where you expect it to be nothing is complicated and also like in those sister cars when you turn on the wipers and the lights and stuff it gives you that visible indication on the screens so that you're not having to faff about and look manually on the control you can actually see on the display what you've done so plenty of really practical quality of life stuff in here exactly what you'd expect from Kia Hyundai and that's what people are saying you know why would you pay that much it's just a fancy Hyundai but I disagree because you're getting all of the practicalities of those brands and all of the features that I think make them excellent to live with and also their reliability and their fantastic warranty. Yeah, you could go out and get something similar size like a Range Rover or a BMW X5 or something like that. A Range Rover, I know so many people who have Range Rovers and whilst they're lovely things, a lot of them spend more time in the garage than they do on the road. It's just, it's just an issue and people know about it. Um, and, and I'm sure JLR are doing what they can to address that. but you know that the warranty for this is going to be better and you know that it's going to be more reliable it's just factual and bmw x5 that's probably a good rival as well because it's a similar price range and i think it's going to have a bit more of a sporty dynamic to drive it's going to be a little less plush a little bit firmer um and you know they are built really nicely but it's not going to be as reliable as this i don't think and it's definitely not got the same touch of class so it's definitely nice and quiet in here um you can get the option for laminated glass there is some tire noise but that's to be expected on 22s i was expecting it to ride really harshly but it's actually very soft suspension even in sport mode it's a little bit wallowy if you're going over lots of bumps on the motorway it kind of floats around a little bit but for day-to-day -day driving it really irons things out nicely um, and the adaptive dampers deal with that lovely as well so even now i just went over a really harsh bump there and it really wasn't that phased. Um, you can also tell that it's been designed with a low center of gravity, so it doesn't feel too much like it's gonna roll over when you're going into corners. Some, some big SUVs like this, you go into a corner and you don't have much confidence. Whereas this, although it doesn't corner flat by any stretch of the imagination, it definitely doesn't feel like it's gonna tip. I think considering this is aimed at being a luxury vehicle, it's just about right. But if you want something that's a little bit more of a sporty drive and that's a little bit more dynamic in the bends and on the twisties, then probably something like an X5 is gonna suit you better. The lane keep assist is good, but can be slightly intrusive at times. But there is one singular button to do the automatic steering on the highway. So you press that and it will just keep you in lane. You just keep your hands on the wheel and it will do the steering for you, which is nice and luxurious. So I'm gonna whack it into sport mode here and we're gonna take the roundabout that I normally take. I can feel the seat adjusting to hug me a little bit tighter and I'm about to take a roundabout at some pace just to see what happens. Oh yeah, it picks up, that was the limit right there. And you can see some body roll there, but in actual fact, it's not too bad. And the torque in this diesel model really picks you up where you need it. I'm not even that bothered about the sound of this six cylinder diesel. It does have some pumped in noise, but it sounds pretty good. And to be fair, I'm not sure what the four cylinder petrol is gonna sound like. It might sound a little bit strained in a car this size, but I'm yet to drive that and judge. See, I'm going up some pretty hairy roads now, and. Although there's some road noise, it is soaking up the bumps pretty nicely, even on the 22s. And even though it's big, it does give you confidence, especially with all the cameras. You can press the button at any time to see those cameras as well. Well, let's just do a launch here. Oh, there's the torque. to 60 is achieved in around 6.9 seconds which doesn't feel massively fast but in this diesel you can really feel that torque um, and it's more than adequate let's be honest it's powerful enough for your day-to-day -day driver gets you out of any sticky situation and definitely has some grunt when you need it so then what's my overall verdict on the gv80 well i'm really impressed to be honest i know some journalists have slated the car for just being an expensive hyundai or an expensive kia and that they're just copying the bentley and all that but i've got to be honest i really think the combination of the korean excellence of reliability and technology and this beautiful design that looks like it's been inspired by bentley 
it means that you're getting a really exclusive vehicle with a great warranty, loads of great tech that's really reliable, it's really safe, and in general, I don't think you're gonna be worried about it going wrong. I think you're just gonna be able to munch miles in it and be happy with it. Whereas, you know, fair enough, you could get in a BMW X5 and you might have a little bit more fun driving it around, but it's a BMW X5. There's thousands of them everywhere. And you could get in a Volvo XC90, but the tech isn't as good in an XC90. It's just a little bit more dull. This is just different. All week I've been driving this around. I've had compliments, I've had looks, I've had questions. People are interested in it. People think it's gorgeous, especially in person. And I would implore you to actually go and see one before you make a decision to go and buy a Volvo XC90 or an X5 or a GLE or something like that. Or even if you're looking at a used Range Rover, yeah, a used Range Rover is gonna be a nice thing, but are you buying it just because it's a Range Rover? Maybe, I mean, this isn't quite as nice sitting in here as a Range Rover, but to be honest, with the tech that I've got in here and all of the stuff that I know is really reliable and these cameras, everything is exactly how I'd like it for a daily driver. I praise the Kia Sportage for being one of the best cars I've driven this year. And yeah, it's not really my cup of tea because it's not very sporty or fast. It is one of the best cars I've driven this year because it was reliable the whole time I had it. It was excellent to drive. Um, the warranty is amazing. And it had all the most up-to-date tech that made life actually really useful. Nothing too gimmicky. It's more stuff that actually you really enjoy day to day. And this is all of that, but with all the bells and whistles on top. It's all of that technology and all of those benefits, but with more glitz and more glam. And I'm totally okay with that. I think it represents a really good value for money car. But thank you so much to Genesis for sending the car out to me. It's been an absolute pleasure driving it this week and I'm really looking forward to checking out some more Genesis models in the future because it's one of those things you don't know what to expect until you actually sit in it and use it. And I've been thoroughly impressed. And I don't mind that I have to explain to people what it is because I know, sitting here, that I'm probably getting a better experience than someone who's got a Range Rover in the same price bracket. Because I know that this is gonna work. And if it doesn't, it's covered by a great warranty by a very personable company. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye-bye.